Hello, everybody. Good day. Welcome, welcome. It is that time again for our weekly Philosophy Friday Stoic lesson. For us, we are going through a 52-week journey based on the Handbook for New Stoics by Massimo Paglucci and Gregory Lopez. So we would love to have you follow along with us. Even if you're just starting out, we would still love to have you join us. For this week, we are talking about week 20, which the title of this lesson is Speak Little But Well. And the way they set this up is so perfect in that, you know, they talk about basically social media has created the ability for us to have unlimited and unprecedented connections, but are these connections actually worthwhile? Are they serving us? And they ask the fundamental question, what would the Stoics have to say about the quality of our social media feeds and interactions today? At the bottom, as with every lesson, there is a quote, and this one is from our boy Epictetus. And I'm just gonna pull out a couple things that he says here. He talks about be silent for the most part, or really say only what is necessary and in a few words. Don't talk of ordinary things. Above all, do not talk about men in blame or compliment or comparison. It's basically what they're trying to say here is when you speak or when you choose to share, Share something that is of quality or of value versus trivialities like things such as, you know, the weather or the news or politics, right? Because basically they're saying that a lot of social interaction is small talk. And they're saying, you know what, that's not necessarily bad. It can serve as a kickoff point, but have, have the goal of the conversation or try to make the conversation more than just those trivialities. Um, they say that, you know, it, so much of our conversation would improve if we just increased our awareness of what's going on in the world and what we can do about it. Social discourse is important. It's part of the ways that we connect with each other and we find commonality or we maybe find disagreement, but find opportunities to explore new ideas. And, but really just thinking about the idea of avoiding gossip and they, it's interesting when they talk about gossip, they say that gossip is not just the negative. It's not the blaming, but it's comparing and even praising. So it's the, it's the frivolity, I guess, of it, the, the putting on airs, if you will, and, and leaving judgment at the door. We really should be focusing in our conversations about how can we help improve ourselves and each other when we do sit down and have a chat. So, uh, Thoughts, guys and gals on this one so far? I'm practicing my stoic <laughs> lesson right now. <laughs> For the first time, Rob has been very quiet today. For the first time? For the first time. For the first time. No. But it's, it's, it's paying attention is really what this is. It's my big theory is that language is contagious. So when I say that, I mean, the language that you say and that you think will be attracted to you in your life. So if you do gossip, you'll be surrounded by gossipers. So that I believe is the next lesson, mind your company. So I'm going to kind of, I haven't even read it yet, but the jumping ahead part is it's about picking and choosing wisely who you have conversations with and what about that makes the difference. So sometimes I want to talk politics because it's very interesting. And I do that on a daily basis anyways at my day job. But I find that that to be a very interesting way to gauge people. Mm -hmm. So if you use certain tools and techniques to gauge people and what they talk about, you can then determine how much investment you want to put in that relationship. But you can try to push the conversation to see if they go with you as well. Mm -hmm. A good point. I, I often get some of my best lessons from children having worked with kids for a long time. And I'll never forget, I was, I was teaching in the classroom and um, my co-teacher and I, we were trying desperately to teach a concept and a child raised their hand. I mean, we probably, we were just talking around in circles. A child raised her hand and said, just get to the point. 
<laughs> and I was like, hmm, wise words. <laughs> Mm -hmm. can we wrap this up i have a i have a playground date in like five minutes can we just get this going well that's a great lesson right <laughs> and, and that's what we like on the radio we're trying to figure out how, how to make clear points so we're not meandering around now there's a certain time you have to fill obviously when you do a talk show but you have to try to make your points clear and concise and you got to repeat those because oftentimes the way people listen to the radio it's like a wave it comes and goes so if you want to make your point prominent you have to repeat it now, another technique that you can use to, I actually teach about this in my course, is ask better questions. And what I mean by that is not the typical, how are you? You'll hear that question 10 times a day. But if you think of a different question that makes a person think, you get a little bit more out of them and then it's more interesting for them as well. So there are certain things that you can do that you may can still speak less, but invite people to talk more, mm -hmm. to try to get what they're getting at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think ultimately this lesson goes back to a very popular stoic lesson that we've seen in the, in the last 19 weeks, which is quality over quantity. And they're trying to get us to think instead of like, blah, 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 what focus on the quality versus the quantity of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I loved what they said on the bottom of page 130. In fact, I like circled it several times. And they say in the last sentence, if we don't pay more attention, the, they're talking specifically about the internet, but the internet is just an extension of the way we talk anyways. It's just a lot more talking. But they say, if we don't pay more attention, we run the risk of descending into a cacophony of irrelevancies. I loved that. I was like, ooh, what a turn of phrase there, a cacophony of irrelevancies. And that's really just what they're trying to say. Like you said, it's the quality of the conversations, the quality of the questions, the quality of the debate. Even for someone like Rob, who is on talk radio, it's so easy to dip into what I would say are judgments of what someone is or isn't doing on whichever side of the aisle you're subscribing to. Right. And they talk about that when it comes to conversation and especially things like gossip, I would say that that is a form of gossip, that we simply don't know enough about others to arrive at judgments about their character and actions. What others do is their business, not ours. Focus on improving ourselves. You know, it's interesting. I, it makes me think recently we watched on Netflix, David Letterman has a new a new show and one of his episodes recently he was uh he interviewed dave chappelle and you could tell that dave was trying to get or dave letterman was trying to get dave chappelle to react in a certain way as it related to the black lives matter movement or some of the events that happened and he george was like floyd. or you're george floyd specifically and he kept, he, the well, way you don't he was know, was asking, killed by a Minneapolis police officer, it was filmed, became this whole big thing. If you avoid news, sorry, didn't mean to yeah, interrupt. But. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, but Dave Letterman was trying to get Dave Chappelle as a black man. You could tell he was trying to get him to react a certain way. And I think one of the questions, I'm going to paraphrase it, was he was like, well, yes, but don't you think that, you know, those cops were terrible people? And Dave was like, I, 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 no, I can't. I'm not going to assign a judgment to them. I have no idea what was going on in their heads. I don't know what their life is like. I'm not, that's not for me to do. That is not for me to be their judge. That's someone else's role. I'm not going to go in. I can't, I can't even begin to, to, uh, to say what they weren't, were or weren't thinking. That's theirs. That's what, that's what they have to live with. That's what they have to own up to. Yeah. And I was so amazed at that because it's so easy to just react and fall into that trap of judging someone else and assuming you know, you know, what they, how, what they should or shouldn't have done, or they're terrible people because they did X. And it's like, you don't know their story. You don't know their life. You don't know what they were going through. You don't know what was going on in their mind at that moment. So I really, that I was surprised at that. And, and I appreciated that they even called it out here that basically it's about their character not 
yours. Their business is their business. And we live in an opinionated culture where opinions are rewarded because mm -hmm. social media rewards opinions and generalities. Mm -hmm. So there's opinions on my Twitter feed that all Trump voters are this and all Biden voters are this. And clearly that's not true, yeah. but that gets retweeted and liked. So that language being contagious gets stuck in people's heads. So I fully believe that social media has rewired our brains to think a certain way, to think in terms of likes, Tweets. to think in terms of provocati, you know, to, to be able to get notoriety, significance, if you want to call it that. So that is one thing that I would add to the stoic lesson mm -hmm. in that I've been observing how humans communicate for the last 20 years in a professional capacity and noticing that has been a ma massive change over the last really four or five or six years that that's caused a lot of this division. So the stoic would say, okay, let's not judge the division. Let's not judge in generalities. Let's have real conversations and get down to the, to the real nitty gritty about politics or important things in, in people's lives. Yeah. Yeah, it says even here in the middle of 130, we might learn something if we just stopped pontificating all the time. And we were more open to having different voices participate in the conversations, people of different genders, ethnicities, cultures, etc. Well, that was actually a piece of my big takeaway from this lesson after, um, and I know we're short on time, but um, what, what I took away was I so I said that I needed to just be at peace with the fact that I don't have to have a response to everything. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if someone is talking about something that I honestly don't know much about, it's okay for my response to be, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or no That's comment. Yep. That's an important takeaway. Yes. Yes. It's just one that we're often not comfortable mm -hmm. with doing, but I feel like if you can just embrace the fact that you don't need to be omnipotent and you don't need to have an opinion about everything and just say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. what or if you thank, think you about, for, thank you for sharing. How many things can you know really well, right? How many things can you possibly be an expert in? Mm -hmm. Master of none, right? Maybe four. Well, that's it. Yeah, no, that's four. probably true, right? You know how to do four or five things really well. But we have opinions about 95 other things. Mm -hmm. like, it's just an opinion. And that's the other part, too. It's just an opinion. Yeah. So in the lesson, specifically what they wanted us to do was create a list of topics that would serve us to speak more, speak more well on. I don't even know if that's a real word, but speak well on, um, but less. So things that you find you engage in those trivialities, the cacophony of irrelevancies, if you will, but the things that you find that you can dip into where you're speaking a lot, but not well, uh, what were a couple that you identified? It's gossip really yeah. is a big one for me. And who's doing what, what reality show television person's doing this. I don't have mm -hmm. tons of those conversations, but I see a lot of that content online that now I'm going to avoid because mm -hmm. it serves no purpose. How about you, Sierra? I just wrote things I don't know much about. Yeah. Yeah. I kept I like it that. Really yeah, there's a lot of things that I, I, people talk about and I'm like, I have no point of reference there. So I don't need to say anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is also freeing to know that you don't have to care about everything and every issue. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Exactly. <laughs> And so, you know, they also had us think about like an implementation intention, uh, basically your trigger, right? Implementation intentions are meant to be the trigger. So when you bump into this, what do you say to yourself to, uh, to kind of kick you out of it? Like they say, for example, whenever I talk with my father, I'll tell myself silently, don't gossip. Because normally when you speak with, you know, a particular person, you always find that the conversation dips into gossip and what so-and-so is doing or what so-and-so is not doing. So having a little bit of a mantra for yourself. So was there anything that you specifically called out as a, uh, as a implementation? I said, change the subject if it becomes too trivial. Yeah, yeah. 
what would Marcus Aurelius do? Yeah, well, cut, yeah, exactly. Sort of. Yeah, I said, you know, whenever I go on social media, because social media is where all of this just is intensified because it's everybody talking. I'll ask myself, how is this benefiting me? So that way I don't find myself kind of diving into some of those wormholes that you can get in. So just how is this benefiting me? And then whenever I read an article, because I do tend to read a lot of articles, but sometimes I don't self-edit when I'm reading them. And so I said, I'll ask, what can I learn from this? Or what am I learning from this? And if the answer is nothing, then move on. So that was a great growth, growth mindset there, Amy. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so to wrap this up, I loved, I even highlighted this because this perfectly ties into what you say in your course. They talk about why we did it. And it said, speech is one of the most important actions we engage in during our day. We use it to communicate with others and with ourselves. It can be helpful as well as unhelpful. So limit the frivolous, interact more meaningfully with those around you so that way you can build stronger bonds and cut down on shallow internal chatter as well. So final thoughts. That's it right there. Perfect. That's it. Speak wisely. And carry a big, oh no, that's, <laughs> that's Okay, quote some Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> that's a different one. Mm -hmm. To quote Rob Hunter, communication is your billboard to the outside world. So make sure you have something good to say. Yes, well said. Yep. Well, thank you everybody for joining us on the porch for our week, is this week 20 lesson to speak well, but less. Up next, we have week 21, which is choose your company well. So again, it all has that larger theme, Sierra, like you said, quality over quantity in what we do, in what we say, in who we interact with, and how we engage in our lives and in this big world of ours. We would love to have you join us if you can, or if you simply just want to get a copy of the book, there is a link to this in the YouTube video, as well as on the video that you see here. Um, even if you just follow on your own, that's great. We have these videos that are available. We do them every week. We meet as a group. We would love to have you join us though, to engage in some dialogue, share some of your insights and takeaways. If you're interested, please sign up with us. But either way, we hope that you've enjoyed this and gotten a little bit out of it. And we hope to see you again soon on the porch.